Hello, I'm Timothy Liu from Navifus Corporation, a medical device company in Taipei, Taiwan. Today, I'll be giving an overview of the Navifus system, a focused ultrasound device that can help accelerate the treatment of a variety of central nervous system diseases. To give a brief introduction about focused ultrasound, its use in medical treatments has already been around for a long time. For example, the first publication of using focused ultrasound for opening the blood-brain barrier was in 2001, while the first publication of using it to facilitate drug delivery of a chemotherapy agent was in 2006. However, only in the last five years has focused ultrasound technology been formally used in clinical trials. Currently, there are still some unsolved problems regarding the use of focused ultrasound in humans. Firstly, most available procedures are invasive, can cause pain and discomfort to the patient, and can result in other inconveniences or loss in quality of life. Secondly, most focused ultrasound therapies require high maintenance, often depending on specialized facilities and needing long operation times. Thirdly, most focused ultrasound procedures rely on an MRI for guidance during the procedure. And while this is an accurate method, an MRI suite may not always be readily available. Finally, measures to control the acoustic output are necessary to prevent side effects or possible harm. The Navifus system, also known as the Navifus One, is Navifus Corporation's main product. It is composed of a few major parts, the cabinet, the console, and the exposure head. The cabinet contains the host computer of the system. The console is a protective case with a monitor in it with a holding arm to connect to the cabinet, a keyboard and a mouse to control the software, and a USB connector for data input and output. The exposure head contains a transducer on the bottom, handles on the side, and a holding arm to adjust the position. The main power switch is on the, cap on the cabinet, while the bo bottom of the cabinet has wheels with lock paddles for ease of transportation. The Navifus One uses a novel neuronavigation method to help simulate the optimal opening of the blood-brain barrier near a tumor. This slide explains how we can use the Medtronic Stealth Station S7 to guide focal beams emitted from the Navifus One's exposure head. The neuronavigator uses optical tracking to visualize the position of a surgical instrument by recognizing corresponding fiducial markers on the instrument. This process is called registration. Navifus has created its own custom fiducial marker, which, when placed into the Navifus One's exposure head, mimics the S7's calibration tool and allows seamless tracking of focal beams from the transducer on the S7's visual interface. Navifus's own custom phantom probe has been functionally verified and validated so that it is compatible with the Stealth Station S7. Here, we show the overall procedures during the focused ultrasound treatment. Prior to the treatment, patients will receive an MRI to confirm tumor information and help select the treatment location. They will also receive a CT scan to obtain cranial bone information for personalized treatment planning and skull penetration estimation. These images will be integrated into the Neuronavigator. Next, preparation for the patient will occur in a separate room, and after completion, they will be moved to the Navifus One's treatment site. The focused ultrasound treatment procedure requ requires at most 30 minutes and can generally be divided into four main steps. One, setting up the neuronavigation guidance. Two, intravenous microbubble injection. Three, focused ultrasound sonication. And four, post-treatment MRI scan. Now I will introduce some of the core technologies of the Navifus One. As mentioned previously, the Navifus One utilizes a novel and tested neuronavigation method for guidance during the focused ultrasound procedure. As seen in the video, once the exposure head is synchronized with the neuronavigator, it will be possible to track the focal points of the ultrasound beams. The Navifus One features three major focused ultrasound hardware technologies, focus point steering, passive cavitation detection, or PCD feedback control, and passive imaging of focused ultrasound energy. I will briefly go into detail about these technologies in the next few slides and how they are applied in the Navifus One. Firstly, the Navifus One is a phased array ultrasound system with a 256 element transducer. Up to 32 elements can be used as a receiver for different functions. The advantages of the transducer's design are as follows. Firstly, each element can control output energy and relative phase difference among elements independently. Secondly, it allows precise control of the focusing point 
resulting in an improved and more efficient dynamic scanning effect. Thirdly, it can produce multiple focusing points for the distribution of ultrasound energy, which allows increased flexibility of, of therapy. Now let's talk about the characteristics of the focal beams emitted from the transmitters. The system output specs include a frequency of 500 kilohertz, burst length of 300 microseconds to 10 milliseconds, a burst period of 20 milliseconds to one second, and an output acoustic pressure from 0.1 megapascals corresponding to 0.2 mechanical index to three megapascals corresponding to four mechanical index. For the focus parameters, a single focal beam can have a focus distance of 140 millimeters and a dimension of three by three by 20 millimeters. A focal scanning matrix can have a maximum of nine focus beams in a three by three matrix with five millimeters spacing between them. Using the matrix, a focal scanning circle can be built consisting of up to 43 scanning focal beams. When arranging these 43 beams separated by a three millimeter gap between each other, an overall 20 millimeter unit can be built. In the focal beam steering video, we show our device using beam steering to direct the focal beams in an end shape in a water-filled phantom. The focal point of the beams is indicated by bubbling, and the phantom reacts to temperature changes by changing color. So in the video, we show that we can precisely direct the focal point of the beams in an end shape with little heat dissipating, leading to a clear end image being formed in the phantom. The second hardware feature is the passive cavitation detection, or PCD control. When using the PCD control, 16 of the 256 elements are used as receiver channels to measure the acoustic emissions. Previously, our PCD control was used to evaluate the histological hazards and validate the safety of different levels of exposure for opening the blood-brain barrier, or BBB, in animals. The animals were divided into three groups. In the low exposure group, exposure was fixed at a lower level for the entire treatment period. The occurrence rate of BDB opening was only 25%, while the occurrence rate of red blood cell extravasation was 0%. In the PCD control group, the focused ultrasound exposure level was controlled in real time by the PCD control. The occurrence rate of BDB opening was 100%, while the occurrence rate of red blood cell extravasation was 22%, but within the acceptance criteria. In the high exposure group, Exposure was fixed at a high level for the entire treatment period. The occurrence rate of BBB opening was 100%, while the occurrence rate of red blood cell extravasation was 100%. So in summary, the design PCD function can reliably open the BBB while minimizing risk of and actual side effects, such as red blood cell extravasations. Our PCD control is currently being utilized in a clinical trial combining Avastin and facilitated opening of the BBB using focused ultrasound, which has been initiated since July 2020. While doing the sonication treatment, the internal PCD controller helps limit the focused ultrasound power in real time, as seen in this video, and can provide a personalized acoustic output. So as seen in the video, focused ultrasound energy or acoustic output is delivered and gradually increased with the acoustic emissions change being measured simultaneously. Once the acoustic emissions change exceeds the upper threshold, the acoustic output would stop increasing and start to decline. The acoustic output will stop declining when the acoustic emissions change is less than the lower threshold. Afterwards, the acoustic output will stay at this level until the end of the sonication time. The last hardware feature of the NaviFus One is it is capable of utilizing 32 receiver channels to construct the passive imaging of ultrasound energy. This represents a technical breakthrough in focused ultrasound hardware, as previous technology utilizing four receiver channels are unable to reconstruct the passive imaging. Utilizing 32 receiver channels results in a significantly higher signal to noise ratio and improve the visualization of the probable energy deposit area of the acoustic emissions. In the video, we show an example of the visualization of passive energy for the NaviFus system. Now I will talk about some of the NaviFus One software features. The software that comes with NaviFus One allows the user to customize the focused ultrasound treatment for the patient Firstly, it enables users to do the treatment planning in 2D and 3D, 
followed by an estimation of the transcranial penetration rate. The 2D planning allows users to determine the region of interest, or ROI, and define the skull boundary based on patient CT images. The 3D planning allows users to determine the feasible and optimal positions of transducer assembly on the patient's head. The transcranial penetration simulation function estimates the focused ultrasound propagation through the patient's skull based on the ROI. Regarding ROIs where the penetration rate is less than 20%, the lost focused ultrasound energy may hypothetically become heat and be absorbed by the skull. To minimize this risk, a system restriction where ROI whose penetration rate is less than 20% cannot be archived, which prevents the software from proceeding. The sonication process is where users control the system to shoot or stop sonication. In this page, the user can view and customize the focused ultrasound transcranial penetration rate and the transcranial acoustic pressure. There is also a time indicator showing the remaining sonication time. Once sonication begins, the NaviPlus 1 uses the PCB function to provide personalized acoustic output, as seen in the previous slide describing PCD. Although our clinical NaviPlus system is designed for use in humans, the effectiveness of the device and many safety parameters are based on extensive translational studies from a wide variety of animals, such as mice, rats, dogs, and pigs. New hypotheses derived from clinical results can also recursively be validated in animals, allowing new cycles of development for new clinical applications using focused ultrasound. Now I will talk about the clinical trials that NaviFuss has done or is in the process of doing with its NaviFuss system. Here is a brief summary of the clinical trials that have used or is using the NaviFuss system. The potential clinical applications of the NaviFuss one are diverse and can help treat a variety of central nervous system diseases such as glioblastoma, epilepsy, and Alzheimer's disease. NaviFuss previously conducted its first in-human clinical trial a few years ago for recurrent glioblastoma patients and successfully demonstrated safety for human use. The procedure took less than 20 minutes. In the trial, DCE MRI was used to evaluate the degree of blood-brain barrier opening. We can see in the middle photo a clear increase in K-trans area was noted immediately after focused ultrasound treatment and returned to baseline within 24 hours. For its other clinical trial in epilepsy, NaviFuss kicked off its first in human trial in 2018, began its phase one clinical trial in 2019, and completed the trial in 2020 with six patients at Veterans General Hospital in Taipei, Taiwan. In the trial, we analyzed the power change of the target electrode during and after focused ultrasound. The main results are as follows. In three patients, EEG power decreased after sonication. In two patients, the seizure frequency decreased one to three days from baseline. In conclusion, NaviFuss 1 is designed to help solve unmet needs in focused ultrasound technology by providing a non-invasive, fast, low-cost, and user-friendly system that can potentially treat many diseases by facilitating the opening of the blood-brain barrier or other clinical applications, such as neuromodulation. The device uses neuronavigation for guidance, providing a cost-effective alternative and greatly reducing the time using an MRI. Using its technological features, the NaviFuss system strives to provide new and personalized solutions for central nervous system disease therapy. Thank you for listening to our presentation. We hope that you have a better understanding now of our NaviFuss system. And for any inquiries or other questions, please contact us at info at